Welcome back. It's Chris from Bitcoin Advisors. It's a beautiful Thursday this morning in Westlake Village, California, a little windy. So I wanted to preface today uh, with this to all the people out there who really they're trying to grow their wealth right now with Bitcoin and altcoins. Uh, the problem is things are just straight up easy right now. You don't have to do anything to make money. Don't confuse brains with a bull market. That's the great old saying. This is exactly that. You know, when Bitcoin goes, oh, from 4,000 in March up to 60,000 in less than one year, that's a pretty darn impressive move. You don't have to be a professional trader to make money there. So the point is, um, at some point things are going to reverse and that is what we saw back here in 2018 and 2019. Um, and that's actually where you're going to have to know how to take profits and trade. Otherwise, those paper profits turn into paper losses and a lot of frustrations along the way. And I really fear a lot of people getting into Bitcoin at a time like this, mostly because things are easy right now. That's true. In fact, that, that's a fact. It's easy right now, in my opinion. And that's not normal, right? This market is not normal, and the people who get in now don't realize that. And, well, it's probably going to end badly. So you have to actually have some skills, not just think, oh, I buy the dips, and that's how I make money. No, there is a lot more to it than that, and that's why I'm making these videos. I hope it helps you, and really, it helps me to get better. Mountains are still being moved. And strongholds are still being moved. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. And bodies are still being red. Giants are still being slain. Cause God, we believe. Yes, we can see. Wonders are still what you do. So, we have plenty to talk about here. Following up on the short term, medium term, and higher term time frames and you might ask what does that mean so the short term time frames are going to be your one and two hour candles okay each candle represents one or two hours on those time frames then we got the medium term time frames which are the four hour to 24 hour candles and then you've got your higher term so that's the four hour to 12 hour even 24 hour that's the medium term higher term is going to be two day three day weekly monthly these higher term time frames so uh, let's go ahead and check out the fear and greed index at a 79 which was a healthy reset we were over 90 for about two months and people were being very greedy I mean really bullish um, Open interest is up from seven and a half billion to seven point eight billion, so we're holding steady there. And what are we seeing play out right now? Bitcoin is ranging, as you would imagine, it's ranging um, between forty-five and I'm going to say fifty-five thousand. We haven't popped up there yet. Um, but we are ranging on the lower term time frames right now between 48 and 51,000. Um, so that's typically what you see. If open interest is steady, Bitcoin ranges, that's what you would expect. Uh, Bitcoin dominance currently at a 61.5, holding steady from yesterday. So this is likely reaccumulation again between forty-five and fifty-five thousand. Okay, 
reaccumulation between 45 and 55,000. If it was distribution, right, we would see a sell off and a break of structure. And what would that look like if we came down and had a daily closure below this $45,000 pivot right here? A structural break plus open interest shooting up. If that were to happen, this would be defined as distribution and perhaps it could be the end of the rally. Funny rates are getting paid to hold longs. People are getting paid to hold longs right now. That's bullish. So right now, what is it? It's a war between the short term and medium term time frames. Who's going to take over? Who's going to win the battle? Uh, the medium term, I'm going to jump in here with the four hour and 12 hour and point out something on specifically. So the four hour look, we're ranging between 45 and 51. Uh, if we do get a break above this 51,000 pivot, on a four hour, I'm going to expect to move back up here towards 54, 55,000. Um, that is a multi thousand dollar move. That's a nice move. Um, so, and what am I going to denote that on the 12 hour, we do have some hidden by bullet, hidden bullish divergence coming in here from back here. So price action, what is, what is hidden bullish divergence? Let's see if I can get this up on my tiny screen here. So price is making a higher low, right? Higher low, well, RSI is making lower lows. Price making higher lows. And this, of course, is in the course of an uptrend. That is hidden bullish divergence. Looking for that to get played out. Hopefully we pop back up to 55,000. Um, let's take a look at something here on the CMEs here, which are our trusty CME charts here. Um, what do we want to look at on CMEs? Because right now the weekly closure is coming up on Friday, which is also the end of the month and what do I want to take a look at here on the monthly that's all my little things are going off here hoping I don't get a phone call um, so let's pull this up on a monthly and yes on a monthly I'm gonna throw on our Bollinger Bands here our favorite Bollinger Bands on a monthly if we do get a closure, look at this thing, huge. Any anywhere above fifty-five thousand, which is where, or forty-five thousand. Actually, the top side trailing band looks like it's coming in about sixty, thirty-six thousand, and it's rising rapidly. Last month we rose from twenty-six to thirty-six thousand. Oh, what do you know? That's probably going to land us next month somewhere around forty. The top side trolling band coming in probably around 45,000. That thing is steepening as we speak. So let's look at. So, yeah, if a bullish coming into March, this is sideways reaccumulation. It usually plays out over a month or two. So, do we get a backfill on this giant candle back down to 45,000? Probably. Again, this isn't financial advice. Um, I'm not a financial advisor. All the things that, you know, I'm not. Um, but it does look like sideways reaccumulation, which usually plays out over a month or two. So, and what do I mean by that? Let's, let's take a look at BLX index, which BLX index is the longest chart history available for Bitcoin goes all the way back here to oh when Bitcoin was five cents uh, pretty nice chart here but what I want to take a look at here on BLX so why do I think Bitcoin can go higher from here I'm gonna pull this this baby out right here this is the RSI coming back from the highs in April of 2013 we've been holding this trend line so can Bitcoin go higher from here? Can we get even more parabolic? I think so. I certainly think 
we can. So I'm going to use this trend line to judge a macro high over the next two to three months. Looks like we still have some room to go, which is nice. Um, let's jump in here to some traditional markets. NASDAQ is playing very well with Bitcoin, playing a very similar move that we saw. And I just want to pull this up here on a daily. And let's hope for some higher lows and a pop back up to 13,500. The weekly closure here, I did mention yesterday, if we have a shooting star closure like this, it would not be pretty at all. This shooting star closure, which we are going to be closing in one day. So we can pop back up tomorrow. I think, I think I'm bullish. I think I'm bullish for traditional markets popping back up. No reason for it to go down with all the money printing they're doing. No reason at all. Um, but Bitcoin playing a very similar move. Um, on the 12 hour, we had this hidden bullish divergence. Again, we're getting massive lower lows in RSI, but we got higher lows in price here. So does this play out? Is this a little fake out? Um, I don't know. Let's take a look at SPY. SPY getting kind of the same move down here, but it does look like, I mean, there's nothing bearish about this chart whatsoever. Look at this chart. We're straight up to the moon. All they got to do is print more money and the SPY just keeps going higher. I did want to take a look at Bitcoin dominance today and I'll throw this up here uh, so maybe it's a little easier to see. Bitcoin dominance. What do we see here? Let's take, put our lines back on. Oh, they're not there. Well, what am I expecting here on a daily We did get the death cross right here, which is where, I apologize. The death cross is where the 55 day moving average crosses below the 200 day moving average. And what do we typically see when a death cross, we get a test back in and then it pops back down. Um, honestly though, let's look at this on a weekly. Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher highs, higher highs. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of bullish on this for uh, us heading some back, somewhere back up to 64 in the next week. Um, so once again, I'm bullish on everything. SPY, NASDAQ, uh, Bitcoin looking good. Let's just take a look at the dollar and gold again really quick. The dollar ticking down, as we mentioned yesterday, a test down at the bottom side of the range. If that breaks, I uh, would be looking for a move down to about eight, 88 and a half uh, based on this measure move right there. Um, but it probably going to hold. It's probably going to hold here at the moment. Um, so what does that mean for the rest of the market? If the dollar pops back up, I mean, it's typically not good for all of our other assets. We want it to go down, dollar go down, Bitcoin go up, and everything else goes up. Um, did we want to take a look at Ethereum? Ethereum getting the test on the weekly perfectly to the T on the 10 simple. Um, what about the monthly? How does the month look? I mean, we're just straight up to the moon. I think Ethereum's going to follow whatever Bitcoin does at the moment. Um, and again, I, I think Bitcoin dominance came up the reversal. So what I'm going to start doing, guys, is putting out some trading videos to start teaching a little bit more about charts and graphs and how to read the charts. So stay tuned. Check in every day. Uh, I'm pretty much the only one who watches these videos, so I'm doing it for myself and for a few friends and family. Hope you're having a blessed day. Bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California.
and I'm going to get out. 